Would you like to win and achieve success at what you do? Welcome to the Winner's Ways Podcast, where we create winners every day. And now, your host, the author of Winner's Ways book and life coach, Bola Alabi. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Winner's Ways podcast. This is where we talk about your career, your money, and we give you life motivation to help you excel. Once again, guys, I have an awesome guest with us. We have James Saliba. James is a certified coach, a trainer, and a public speaker. So today we are going to be talking and having this conversation with uh, James. We will talk about uh, how to position yourself for career change and uh, for those that want to get promoted. James is going to share some tips with us. Without keeping you guys waiting any further, I'm going to bring in my guest, Jim. Hey, Jim, how are you? Hey, how are you doing today? Happy to be here. Perfect. Thank you very much for your time, uh, James. I'm excited about this. So, uh, James, can you uh, tell us about you? Let my audience, let them get to know you. Sure. Um, I started my career as a developer, and I had grown to be a, a VP of a $4 billion company over time. And then I left and kind of went out on my own, helping people, individuals, teams, and organizations transform into something bigger. Oh, that's perfect. So you, not right now, you said you went ahead and do your own thing. So uh, do you care to tell us exactly what you do currently? Sure. Um, I am an executive coach. I help and I I engage leaders to reach their full potential. Often they feel stalled in their career and they can't move things forward, or it could be they just need a sounding board. As you move further up, there's less people to really talk to. Oh, I completely agree with that. So I've also had to, uh, the chance to talk with people that feel stuck uh, in their career. And mm-hmm. uh, the goal is to get them on stock. So uh, are there things that these people should be doing that will help them to get on stock that maybe you want to share with us today? Sure. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I had a webinar about this earlier in the week. And one of the polls that we took was, what was your feeling stopping you from moving forward? Um, And we gave three things for them to vote on. One was clarity. Do I know what I really need to do to move forward and get my promotion? Some people feel that their their career is stalled because um, jobs promotions happen in the back back room behind closed doors and they don't understand what it takes and they feel it's very political the other thing is there may be some gaps in the skill set maybe they need to be more strategic or they might have been told they need more executive presence and the third thing is most people don't have a strategy on selling themselves and showing them ready for the next position. So the the one that showed up the most was people were unclear about what it would take to move into the next position. Oh, so- it's kind of funny that there was a uh, an article in Harvard Business Review a while back that said most organizations don't document what it takes to move up in a leadership position. And therefore, it they get people get unclear advice from their managers and the managers soft pedal because they don't want to lose them. They're doing a good job, but they're not ready to promote them yet at the same time. 
Wow. So how do you think people can have that clarity uh, in terms of how to actually move ahead in their career? Because uh, according to what you just said, uh, some of them are unclear uh, regarding mm -hmm. what they need to do so that they can move forward. So how exactly can they get that, that clarity? Well, they need to really understand the gap between what's happening. Um, and they need to show that they're visually, that they're continually working to close that gap. So they need to talk to people and what's going on around them. One of the big things though I see is that people come and they tell me, Jim, I'm the person that you come to when you want to get things done. And yeah. everyone comes to me and I get it done. And I do this and I get it done. But that sounds like a doer, not a leader. It's someone I want to have on my team as a leader, but it's not the leader themselves. So you have to learn to transcend above that, be able to delegate and lead and show people what to do and be able to mentor them and moving forward. Uh, that's one example, but I have so many people that do that. Are there things that you would um, maybe recommend for people to do, uh, maybe do us, that will mm -hmm. help them to become leaders? What are those? Maybe there are steps, mm -hmm. maybe there are actions that practical actions that take, maybe you can share those. Um, we could do that. Um, there are many steps that I, I have people take. In fact, I recently wrote a book called the six step leadership challenge. Mm -hmm. And, and in the first two steps, it's really taking an assessment of where you are, what are your strengths and weaknesses, but also how you engage the environment. This is something a lot of people miss out. Um, also, you know, th there's one thing that stops us more than anything else, and it has to do with fear. I, I think in, also in your book, you talk about mindset, and, it, and it's so much that people are either afraid that, uh, that, they're not going to make it, they're going to fail, they're going to be seen as appearing foolish, they don't have the knowledge to do it, you know, something we call imposter syndrome, and mm -hmm. um, we may be afraid of appearing too vulnerable. This is what I call the four fears of leadership, and these stories go on in our head, and it stops us from moving forward. I talk to people about changing those stories. Uh, and I put it into four other quadrants. Four happens to be my lucky number, I guess. But uh, <laughs> first one is L, leaning into your own story. What is your vision to move forward? Or, or what would the world look like if everything happened? And I don't like these one or two sentences vision statements that a lot of companies do that you can almost switch around and not know which company it goes to. This is a story of what your life would look like or your client's life or your team's life or day at work if everything happened. The second quadrant is about engaging or empowering that story. As a leader, you're not going to do it yourself. So how do you execute and get people to execute in a way that you learn at the same time? There's so much that we put a plan together. And as soon as a plan goes into action, we start finding out more information and we feel like we're stuck and we can't change. So being able to experiment and learn at the same time and kind of pivot along the way is really a strength in execution. The other two quadrants are more relationship side of it. To amplify your story is about people. Mm -hmm. What is, how do you work with people? What is the company culture like? Are you driving that? What are the processes and systems that people engage with? Are they the right ones or were they built five years ago and they're out of date and we just do it because that's what we do. Then the last quadrant is defining your story with presence. 
that's all about executive presence, building your own brand. And executive presence is a whole thing onto itself. It, people don't understand what it means, but I break it down into five different categories, um, identification, presentation, communication, affiliation, and then action, putting it all together. Oh, that, that is packed, uh, Jim. Thank you. For yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, it takes a lot, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. But those four quadrants mm -hmm. is what I use for people to start to understand where their gap is. They, yeah. they may not have gaps in everything, but it helps identify what it is they need to move forward. There's no cookie cutter way. Okay, so those four quadrants, because I always like to uh, get them right. You said lean in. Uh, so lean into your, lean story. Into your story. Yeah. Uh, Empower you about, your story. You talked about. Amplify your story. Amplify your story. Okay. And define your story. And define your story. Okay. And relationship and presence. And that's talking about executive presence, right? Yes. So. You started your career as a software manager, uh, software, yeah, software as a engineer, yeah. as yep. a developer. Uh, then somehow you transitioned, uh, you grew your career, you became the VP of a tech mm -hmm. company. Uh, yes. How did you start your leadership uh, journey, uh, Jim? Um, well, at one point in my career, I was avoiding becoming a manager because I liked doing the technical work. And then there was a restructure of an, of the organization, <laughs> excuse me. And they made me a manager, not <laughs> just of a team, but of three teams. So oh, now wow. I was <laughs> now dumped into management and I had to really make it work. And what I normally do would start reading everything I can get. I went back to university, got my MBA, but I started realizing that it's about the people more than anything else. And that's what really drove my career to be a, a VP. I took care of my people. That's good. It's uh, always good to take care of the people, but how do you balance, you know, taking care of the people with getting stuff done. Because sometimes uh, you may get into some mm -hmm. conflicts or some uh, issues uh, around balancing those two uh, mm -hmm. conflicting uh, metrics. Well, there's always conflicting priorities in, in leadership levels. It is the world that you need to design and figure out how to move forward. Um, I define my leadership with three words, which help me do that. One is democratic coaching and servant. Democratic because that's my decision-making model. I like to get information from all my people and all around and then make a decision. This way people have input to it and they feel like they have been heard. Coaching because they're doing most of the work, not me. Mm -hmm. And I want them to reach to their full potential. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also coaching is not about stepping on them when they fail. Failure is a whole opportunity to learn, and we learn more from our failures than we do our successes. That's right. Right? And yeah. the last one is servant. Servant. It's <laughs> about, for me, clearing the one way for whatever they need for my team to get work done. Mm. So they're mostly telling me what they need, yeah. and I try to make it happen but I'm also clear in what our goals are and where we need to go. And I tried to be as transparent as I'm allowed to. Okay, that's good. So why did you start helping and coaching others? Why is that important to you, uh, James? Um, somewhere in, in there, when I started my management and learning, um, some of the courses I took were from Dale Carnegie and 
that kind of started my coaching style. And as I can see people doing better and growing, and sometimes when I'm coaching them, I see that light bulb go off over their head. I get tremendous energy from that. Mm. So seeing that, I just kept on going. And, I'm, and I do that every day now as an executive coach. So this is something that you enjoy. And uh, because the result you are seeing, uh, you are motivated to keep going uh, to do this. So that's good. Um, if Let's think about it. Um, there's this common saying that leaders are born. Uh, do you think leaders are born or anyone can be a leader? Maybe leadership is something that can be learned. What, what's your thoughts around that? 100% leaders can be created. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you're a born leader, it's easier. If you have the natural... Uh, character and skills yeah. for it yes but i think anybody can learn how to do it i didn't want to do it at first as i said uh, and i went and started reading everything i can read uh, i am very data orientated but also people orientated so i find what works for me and what works for me may not work for you and may not work for the next person so it's about finding what works for you and I believe, um, and one of the big topics nowadays is how to be transparent and really be yourself, not having to wear that virtual suit of armor every time you walk into a meeting so things bounce off of you. Right? Right. How, how do you be yourself and make that work? Okay. So I, I know when you worked as a VP of this uh, tech company, you must have the opportunity to promote uh, people or even mm -hmm. hire people. What do you look for in a leader? You know, when you are maybe picking some people to be next set mm -hmm. of leaders, what are those qualities or characteristics that you specifically look out for? Um. I look for people who can look down the road that are really long-term strategic and can make those and can make decisions with minimal amount of information because we will never have all the information we need to make decisions. I had I had a boss who to me say one time he said make the decision and then make it right okay <laughs> I, I couldn't figure out what he was saying but he was saying you need to make a decision fast mm -hmm. and then as you start moving if you need to adjust or change don't be afraid to do that okay, okay. right so it's about not waiting it's not the the big fish eating the little fish, it's the fast ones eating the slow ones. Okay, I like that. So making decisions and not uh, letting fear hold you back uh, right. to stop you from moving forward. So that's uh, very good. Now let's talk about promotion. Um, I mm. see that you said how to be promoted, how to be promotion ready in yes. 90 days. What mm. are those things that uh, maybe someone out there wants to get promoted, how should that person prepare himself for promotion? Well, you need to be able to do the job that you want to move into. Now, most people say, I can do the job, but you need to show you can do it. So you need to kind of be doing it before you even have the promotion from my point of view. Okay. Then it becomes, in many ways, an easy decision for your manager or managers to stand up for you and say something like, well, they're already doing half the job anyway. Right. You might as well give it to them. Okay. Um, even when you're going for an interview, it's not about what you can do, it's what you have done. Yeah. Okay. All right. So 
in your career, um, what are those maybe mistakes that you think you made maybe earlier on in your career or even uh, when you were much more advanced in your career? What are some mistakes that you think you, you made personally? Um, I mis- make mistakes all the time. Okay. I believe it's about experimenting. Remember when you were in fifth grade, probably, and you had to do the science fair thing, and you put your poster board, you put your hypothesis. This is what I think my hypothesis is. This is how we're going to prove or disprove it, and this is what I found out. Well, if we're doing that all the time, we can adjust. Many of my mistakes was I didn't put a time limit on it. And it was basically what we call sunk cost. I said, I already put so much time and energy on it. I don't want to give it up or move. So I'm going to keep it and move forward. So I'm too, too stuck with it. Um, I need, you need to be able to say, yep, this is time to cut it off do something else or make an adjustment. And um, many times out of fear that doesn't happen, but I would say that's the biggest things that source of mistakes that I made. I was too bought into it and I was unwilling to change. Unwilling to change. Okay, so uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, Now, in terms of career growth because I know most of my audience, my listeners, they want to grow in their career uh, and climb the uh, corporate ladder. Mm-hmm. What are some things that you would like to uh, tell them that will help them to so that they can continuously make progress and grow in their career? Um, Well, the world is changing every day. We see this all the time. Um, If COVID taught us anything, you can't take anything for granted and anything can happen and you have to be able to bend with it and change with it. Um, Now you are seeing articles all over the place of of, um, more remote and hybrid work, what does that mean, Uh, more collaboration tools to support remote workers, there's all these articles coming out. So basically, these are all people that are looking into the next year or so of what trends are happening. If you want to move up in your career, it's to understand those things and, and be able to have a solution for it. If yeah. if the goal is to have if the trend is to have more remote and hybrid workers, what does that mean? Well, corporate culture of of big companies having cool space to work and whiteboards and the and the ping pong table and all that doesn't matter anymore. So how do you build a corporate culture in the work rather than in the workplace? You have to start thinking, what do these things mean and how can I provide a solution for them? And that is what moves leaders forward. It's not what we've done, but what I can do and bring, what value I can bring in the next year or so. Basically, uh, they must be proactive and they must uh, be ready and anticipate change. That's that's what I'm yes. hearing. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yes. And and not just say things have changed, give solutions. Solutions. When yeah. I was growing and and coaching leaders that were under me, you know, I used to go into work and there would be a line by my office uh, of me to help them solve problems. And finally, I said, this isn't going to work. Um, I should not be the problem solver. They should be the problem solvers. So I changed the rules a bit and I said, don't come to me until (laughs) you can tell me what the problem is and and give me at least three possible solutions. Solutions. Okay. Right. And and then they would come and do that. And then after a while I said, now you have to come to me with the problem, at least three possible solutions and your recommendation. 
Oh, wow. That's right? good. And then over time, they stopped coming to me because <laughs> they figured it out. <laughs> they figured it out. Right. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, you, you have a book on leadership. Did you call it Six Steps of Leadership? Six Step Leadership Challenge. Six Steps Le Leadership Challenge. Is that available on Amazon? Yes, it's available on Amazon in both print format and in Kindle. And I'm actually working on an Audible format as well. So oh. hopefully that'll come out sometime early next year. Okay. What is one takeaway from your book? One takeaway um, is that you can't do this once, okay. right? All the six steps or whatever way you want to do it, you have to keep repeating it. It'll If you go through it once, for example, in my book, it, there's uh, three phases. One is about looking yourself and how you fit in the in the world. The second is what do I need to do? What skills I need to grow? What people I need to bring? And then the last one is a 30, 60, 90 day plan. Well, once you're done with that 90 day plan, you start it all over again. So it's continuous constantly. Don't stop. I believe the day I stop learning is the day I stop existing. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Jim, as we are rounding up, uh, I always like to uh, encourage, motivate my listeners mm -hmm. and I let my guests, I give them the opportunity to also motivate. When we started this uh, conversation, we talked about people that get stuck in their career, mm -hmm. not knowing what to do or how to move forward. I want you to please uh, maybe share a sentence or two with them on how they can get unstuck. I would say the number one thing is about fear. So don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear stop you. No. Take baby steps if you need to, but move forward. Okay. Don't let fear stop you. Take baby steps if possible. But one thing you must do is to continuously move forward. Thank yes. you uh, for sharing that with us, uh, James. And um, finally, uh, where can my audience find you? Um, well, my my name is James Saliba. Everybody calls me Jim, but you can look me up on LinkedIn as James Saliba. You can find my website, jamesaliba.com. All right. And right, thank you. Two best places. Okay. And now it's a wrap. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. We appreciate your time. You have shared excellent insightful uh, messages about leadership, about career, and how people can continuously grow. Thank you very much for your time, James. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a good one. This episode of Winner's Ways podcast has come to a close. We hope you enjoy and learn something from today's show. We want you to win and excel in all areas of your life. And we regularly explore and share information with our listeners to empower them to win. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more tips and strategies to help you find the success that you've always dreamt of. And don't forget to rate and review so that we can continue to bring you more podcast episodes to empower you. We will love to have you again next week. Now, keep winning. Thank <laughs> you.